Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, December 6, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, the first thing we're going to do is reflect back to the video over the weekend and say we knew that one of the possibilities was that the market was going to find support and bounce away from the most recent breakout area that it ran a test of. They finally did the thing where they came into the 449.75. We talked about all that, and some of the evidence was on the board based on the Friday close. They had somewhat of a jam session worth about 40 S&P handles into the closing bell. So what did we have today? We had follow-through. You don't have to finish at the dead highs to have follow through and a bullish day to say, hey, for at least a while, it's more likely than not that the lows are in. Doesn't mean the lows for months to come. It means the lows until they bounce up to an area that they get rejected from. What's the next short term destination in the northbound lane for the SPY? We'll get to that in a little while. Of course, we have to play umpire calling balls and strikes. Right now, we're in the mode of what's jumping off the page on the daily chart at us. So let's just list out a couple of items. They did the thing where they come into the breakout area, they bounce away from it, and that's what they're doing now. Fair enough. We've got that one covered. Now, in the process of doing that, they're making one of these bearish, wedgish, flaggish kind of patterns. So if you went like this and you say, hey, they had a down move and now they're making one of these deals, which generally speaking will result in another move down. Now, they're not going to make it that easy. That's not the way the market works. You have to take into an account a lot of other things. A, the longer term trend is still up. Therefore, it's hard to kill a bull. There are plenty of traders out there that still have, and investors, and mutual fund managers, and pension fund managers, and the like, that have a buy-the-dip mentality. Rightfully so. They've been right up till now. They're always going to be right up until the point when they're wrong. They're not going to guess when they're wrong. They're going to let the market tell them when they're wrong, and they'll end up taking a lot of losses in the process. That's what creates negative returns. We're all familiar with those. We've seen those before. We have the holiday seasonality thing working. We had a tinfoil hat event over the weekend. We have another one coming up later this month. Are they going to rally in between tinfoil hat events and then hit them again? It's a possible schematic. Or, and we always have to consider the outlandish stuff. Maybe there is no Christmas rally this year. Maybe. They just hit them in the month of December. We've also seen that one before. So here's the way we're going to read this. Until they start getting above certain areas, certain prices that get them, quote unquote, out of the woods, out of the bear woods, at least from a short-term perspective, then the bearish pattern, the bearish, wedgish, flaggish kind of thing is still kind of operable, if you will. I said we'd get back to this, so let's get back to it. What's the number in the northbound lane that's magnetic, that wants to draw price in? Well, there's obviously more than one, but the next number, which is not necessarily close by, I'm talking about if we had another big-time rally tomorrow, so another, let's just say, 1% on the upside, and that's not really a big-time rally. It's just another healthy up day. So let's just say another 50 handles puts us into where? How about into the neighborhood of the 20 period moving average? Are they going to recapture the 20 period moving average? Here's what we'll say. If they run up there sooner than later, it's likely to be more of a resistant point than if they ate time off the clock underneath it, build energy. What would they be doing that for? building energy for another leg higher, and if they do that for an extended period of time, that's really the market's way of telling you that they're going to bust through that 20-period moving average. That's a hypothetical scenario, but we've gone over that many, many times. You should be familiar with that type of schematic. 
Here's an hourly chart. Let me give you some more food for thought. There's a trend line. Now, here's what I'll mention about the trend line. It's not perfect. It's not from pivot high to pivot high to pivot high. It's a conceptual trend line. The market, if I do it this way, and say the market is basically telling us by hitting this area, each and every time it gets to the vicinity of this trend line, and keep in mind, the market is drawing this trend line. It's not me drawing this trend line. I'm only depicting it on the screen because the market's already telling us that that is an important spot. Now, they got a little above it. They came up short over here. The point is, if they continue to beat on it, and they get above, and they continue staying above, we don't have to hang our hat on that trend line. It's another item. It's another guideline that we can use. We have numbers. We have other things in our tool belt. This is just another one to keep in mind. Weekly chart, just as a reminder, last week they came into the 20-week moving average. We talked about it in the weekend video. That's garden variety to bounce off a price like that. That's not out of the ordinary. That is the ordinary. When you're in corrective phases in the market, you're still going to get big swings in both directions. We talk about this stuff all the time. I want to reiterate something more. It's really from a psychological perspective. It's from an awareness perspective. They're going to make it feel like everything's fine many, many times. Big swings in both directions. When the market's going up, and as long as it goes up for more than a few hours, if it goes up for a day three days, three or four days, you start to feel like, hey, everything is fine. They're going to make new highs. Maybe they will make new highs, but everything's not fine. The market is making a turn. The money is made on the turns, but also keep this in mind. They don't make it easy. The long-term trend is still up. Therefore, nothing says this has to be correct if they begin closing above the former highs then we have to step back and reevaluate one more time. We go with the duck. Right now, the duck is the market is in the process of making a turn. The daily chart should have made a turn already. The weekly chart should be turning, but it hasn't really changed trend. You have to keep all these things in mind. Things begin from a shorter term time frame and they morph onto the longer term time frames. It's a process. In the midst of the process, they make it impossible to be on either side of the market if you have no idea what you're doing. If you have an idea of what you're doing, you can trade both sides of the tape and make plenty of money trading both sides of the tape. How's it going inside the numbers today? We're going to run through the commentary, highlight a couple of important things. We're going to let you read all the notes as usual. We'll circle back to stocks on the move, review some charts, and move on from there. That's the summary. Happy Monday. They're trying to be in relief rally mode to start the day. We're not surprised based on the discussion in the weekend video. We know all that already. Let's get down to some brass tacks. Early on, 455.60 was important. If they either open above or get above after the open, the next target in the northbound lane is 457.50. More than that, be handled in real time. There's more numbers. The flip side, if she's failing, then it's all the way down to whatever that says, 451. We didn't have to worry about that. They didn't do that. Let's go continue on as the day gets underway. Remembering the late day jam session on Friday, we've got some follow through today. This is closer to the opening bell. The previous stuff in the early thoughts is from zero dark 30. Now we're going to narrow down some numbers, 457.50 to 458.60 is overhead resistance. Above that, we'll talk about it later. As the opening bell goes, MRNA did the gift that keeps on giving thing. Nice trade. We'll circle back to stocks on the move later. Now they have an early shakeout operation, which was interesting. So by 935, we're identifying a spot, 453.42 is the first spot where buyers would show up. Now, if they get below that, we have that 451 again from the early thoughts. However, let's get our faculties on the chart and understand really what happened this morning. The low here in the 940 candle ending at 940 is exactly 453.56. We identified a price slightly lower 
That was the gap. They never got to the gap. What did they do? They did the thing where they come up short, trade away. It's bullish behavior. The farther away they get from it, the more bullish, at least from an intraday perspective, that really became. And you'll see some other stuff. The 457.50 we cited, that was an interesting number. You can see how they traded around that. They tried to get to the higher number, came up slightly short of it until late in the day. Later in the day, that's not the same, so they went right through it to where? How about the big fat round number? We'll get to that later. We're moving along through the notes, citing trick and company showed up. We collected tickets from stocks on the move. They collected tickets on the rodeo. Let's scroll up a little bit, let you read the notes. You can pause the video, go back to the charts, double check the work. You'll notice here, I put up a third price on AMD. AMD was trading slightly below the second number. And instead of letting it go and having traders sweat bullets that are in AMD, I provided a third price, which we'll take a look at later when we get to the charts. Continuing along with the notes, there's always stuff to learn. I urge you to read the notes, go back to the charts to double check the work. If you're active in the market during the trading day, this is a wonderful guideline. 1010, 457.60 give or take is still magnetic and overhead resistance. It's not, however, the same exact trade as it was before. Still a viable short for the trader that understands they could keep going. The stop would have to be above 459.20 because there's another spot at 458.60 from this morning. Remember, it's a zone. So just to get our faculties again, 10.10 in the AM was here. They ran up to the zone. They pulled back, but really, instead of pulling back a lot, they pulled back a little. They ate time off the clock in order to position themselves to do what? To go capture the big fat round number, 460 and slightly higher. Some traders will take a long trade up to the magnetic zone. Some traders are waiting for the magnetic zone because they want to short the market. It's something for everybody. This way, you trade what you're comfortable with. If I'm in a trade, I'm going to tell you I'm taking a trade at this number. It's a long trade. It's a short trade. Otherwise, I give you the numbers. I give you what should happen. I don't have to be in every trade at every number, but if you want to be in a trade, you have the schematic. 10.15, they reach the zone. Staying above, let's say they keep going, last line of defense, 459.20, before a spike of the big fat round number, 460. Let's move along, you can read the notes, pause the video, go back to the charts to double check the work. 460.30 was cited earlier, there it is. That's where they were going to get to. That's where they got to. That's the top line. They spiked it by a little bit, came back down to where? Look what happened at the end of the day. 458.60, only for me, that number wasn't the same as it was in the morning in terms of importance. I had something else on my radar screen. It was 458 late in the day, but they didn't do it. Where does that come from? It comes from the notes in the afternoon session. I urge you to read the notes, go back to the charts to double check the work. So late in the day, I'm only going to take what I'll call somewhat of an extreme from the norm. So if they got down to 458, I think they would have bounced at 458, maybe slightly below 458. But late in the day, I'm willing to take less risk than earlier in the day. There's less time left on the clock. They never got to 458. They came close. They got to where I showed you before on the chart. And that was it. About stocks on the move. Nice healthy list today. AMD, Chewy, Moderna, NVIDIA, Coin, MARA, and Lucid. The bottom two did not hit their entry objectives. They're off the board. The other five did. So let's go and take a look at some charts. And this is why there was a third number put on the board for AMD. So it was below the stop, but you can see what happened. Here's a five-minute chart. The first number really didn't work. The second number did work, but if you entered at the first and you had the second, you never get the deal, the full base hit. They went down to the third. They bounced back. They did the deal. You just needed time. The numbers work, but not necessarily do they do everything in the manner in which we prefer. However, here's a 15-minute chart. They recovered long before the stop would have been triggered anyway.
Here's Chewy, 5805. You can see what happened. The numbers work. Need I say more? More than the minimum required base hit. Significantly more. Never know which ones are going to be around the low of day. But it does happen a lot. Why is that? Because these stocks are headed for a destination. If we have the final destination on the board, that's going to be it. Moderna was a rodeo. This chart doesn't do it justice. First couple of minutes of the day, Moderna comes into the number. The low here is 277.61. They bounce up. They do the deal. That first number is over. The base hit is in the books. Once they go lower, that's it. You could see what happened after that. They played games in between the next two numbers. With a wild rodeo like Moderna, one bite at the apple is enough for me. How about NVIDIA 284.70 on the board bright and early? 15 bucks later, closing bell. The numbers work. How about Coinbase 246.78, zero dark 30? The numbers work. Volatility is a trader's best friend. The lack of volatility puts you to sleep. What's going on over in Camp IWM? They're doing the same routine we discussed on the daily chart of the SPY. They're now making a bearish wedgish thing. They may make a run, and under normal garden variety conditions, we should see them make a run for two and a quarter. We discussed it over the weekend. Doesn't mean they'll get there tomorrow, but you should see them make an attempt for two and a quarter. Doesn't mean they'll get there, and doesn't mean they'll stop there, but they should be attracted to 225 based on the fact that that convergence of those moving averages are right in that spot. Not to mention a big time breakdown candle high over here at 224.21. So that's a zone of interest. Daily chart trend is down. Weekly chart trend is turning down. It is not past the point of rescue operation. They can certainly get this market back above those moving averages. We just talked about two and a quarter. You look at the weekly chart and you say, hey, they got back above that breakdown candle high in a weekly chart. They're back above the moving averages. And at least they can have some more rally, some more upside if that happens. It doesn't mean you're back into full-on bullish mode. It doesn't matter what it means here. We're talking about the numbers. We're talking about what's going on on the charts. Folks down at the transportation department, Big up day, up two and a quarter percent as it relates to against the SPY, about one and a quarter percent. Remember, my second favorite market leading indicator, a number one canary in the coal mine. By the way, the IWM was up over two percent. So my two favorite market leading indicators were leading the flag, were leading the charge in the rally mode today. If they were headed in the other direction, we would have a red flag up in the air. We look at the weekly chart. What do we notice? We have a breakup candle low, 15,859. Where did they close the week last week? How about 15,967? But they did spike that low. They closed above. Still, that's bullish. And oh, by the way, when we look at this weekly chart, what's jumping off the page at me? How about they ran a test of the most recent breakout area? How do we know that? Market ran up to here, was rejected. We don't make this stuff up. That's just what happened. So we see this over and over and over again. So what did they do? They came back in to run a test and they closed above it. That's pretty good. Weekly chart, above all the moving averages, trend is your friend until she throws your shit in that crawl space in the basement. We're the umpire calling balls and strikes. There's nothing wrong with the transports on the weekly chart. Of note, puzzle piece on the table. Remember, we treat each chart independent of one another. About the Qs, the folks out in Silicon Valley, 382.78, they did the thing, they spiked it, we talked about the weekend video, closing price, 383.13, no accidents, coincidences, all that stuff. This is what you call a relief rally, a dead cap bounce. They're getting support at the 50 period moving average. At this point, we don't know whether they'll run sideways for a few days or they'll run a test of that breakdown candle high first. Which high? This one first. How about 392.34? So call it 392, 391.50, 393. 
under natural garden variety conditions that will be resistance. Financials, same as everything else, relief rally, same routine. Bearish pattern, or are they going to rally into the convergence of these moving averages? Normally, that's what they'll try and do. They'll be attracted to like a magnet into those moving averages. How they react at those moving averages tells the next tale. About Smash Mouth, what's going on here? Look at the size of that tail. They were getting smoked early in the day. They recovered. They put in a tail candle. And they did it on time. What does that mean? Go to the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader. Check out your signs and signals of trend changes. Check out your time is more important than price. And I'm not sure this was a total full stack, but they were starting to stack. It supports the case that we're going to see a further rally across the markets. Of note, puzzle piece on the table. You have Smash Mouth, you have transports, you have puzzle pieces. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.